When people think of a tower defense board game, I'm sure that the name Castle Panic usually comes to mind for most modern gamers. And that is because this game has stood the test of time and has been created over a long period of time to include up to four additional expansions. So, because of this, Fireside Games decided that they were going to create the Big Box. This is a two to four player game, or you can play it solo, and it is a tower defense game. It takes roughly about 45 minutes to an hour to play, and is for ages 13 and up, and in the game, you are going to be defending your castle. Your castle will have walls, it's going to have the inside portion, and depending on what else you're playing, you'll be adding additional things like this wizard tower here and monsters are going to be coming from the outskirts of the forest and attempting to bust up your castle. Your objective? To defeat all monsters in this bag here, depending on how you're playing the game, be, uh, before they're able to destroy all of your towers inside of your castle walls. Utilize the strengths and potentially the weaknesses of the different expansions you'll be including. Attempt to defeat different types of monsters, whether they be just the basic goblins and ogres, or whether they be something a little bit more challenging like the chimera or the hydra or the basilisk. Or, if you'd really like to get into it, why don't you go ahead and choose to run Agnarok with his heralds. And you can include, if you'd like, quests, perhaps, or the wonderful addition of siege engines. Will you be dealing with the Obelisk of Oblivion? Or will you be including the different types of stronghold pieces that will protect yourself along with war machines? There's a lot to go into with this big box expansion. I'm going to mainly be covering how Castle of Panic plays, a little bit of on each of the expansions and how they work. I'll mainly cover my review portion to be, I guess, maybe the first one or two expansions. And because it's so large, and I didn't want to make this video so like, heavy, I have another piece of content coming out on Instagram that will detail the experiences of Brian and the other expansions as well. So that way you can check out this and that without being too bogged down. So let's go ahead and get into the basic idea of how the game is set up. Then we'll get into the different types of play styles and of course my review. Are you ready? Setup for the base game of Castle Panic is actually quite simple. You're going to be getting a certain number of walls, six, and a certain number of towers, six. And you're going to place them in the middle of the game board. You're going to be getting a deck of Castle Panic cards that's probably a little smaller than this one because this includes all the expanded content as well as some promos. And you'll be shuffling that up. Additionally, you'll be selecting a certain number of monsters, and monsters in the base game are typically more on the average side. O ogres and orcs and goblins, a few mages, some trolls, uh, some goblin kings and healers, and you'll be putting them in this bag here. This bag is going to be full of these different monsters, and these monsters are all going to have an HP of some kind. So in order to check to see what type of monsters you're going to be putting in your bag will be based on the expansions you're using. And for the base game, it's simple. In fact, on the back of the rulebook for the big box game, because that's what I'm reviewing here, so you, in case you want to know specifically for each, there is a chart here that details what do I put in the bag if I'm playing with just Castle Panic? How about with the Wizard's Tower? and so on and so on and so forth, up until the point where you put everything in the bag. You'll take things out, remove, th remove things, add things in, and change the setup accordingly to what expansions you're playing. So in this case here, if I was playing with just the Castle Panic, I'd put in six goblins, 11 orcs, 10 trolls, a goblin king, a war orc warlord, a troll mage, a healer, and then a certain number of other different types of things that allow things to be moved and things to be rotated, etc., etc. et cetera, and just put it in the bag there. And that's pretty much how the setup works. Also, depending on the number of players in the game, you'll be drawing cards. This is like your lifeblood. This is what you're using to damage monsters. And the lower number of players will give the players more cards, and the higher number will give players less. So in a two-player game, each player will get six cards, and this is the, the card system that they're going to be having. Uh, after you've got your cards from the main game deck, uh, you, and you, you've gone ahead and put your monsters in the bag, uh, there's also going to be a setup where you'll be placing six monsters out, one in each of the different regions of the game board here and you'll place them from the bag in these spaces here. And of course that setup will change also due to the different types of expansions that you'll choose to add throughout the game. And you'll begin, you'll go through the order of play and uh, then, then you'll pass the turn to the next player and rinse and repeat. It's actually quite a very simple setup. Now of course there's a lot more setup for all the different pieces that you'd like to add, whether it be monster bosses, uh, if you're adding like the engineer and the siege engines and adding this 
thing that allows you to do a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, but for the base game, that's pretty much it. Set up your middle of the board, draw your cards from the deck, and place monsters around after selecting monsters to put in this bag here. And attempting to destroy your castle, while they're attempting to do that while you're attempting to defeat all of them. And that's pretty much it. For pretty much the base game and almost every expansion, you'll be using the basic order of play card. This is the card that will keep track of what you're doing on your turn. Now, if you are playing with the Crowns and Quests expansion, you'll use this order of play card instead, which adds two additional steps. But I'm not gonna go over that. We're just gonna mainly cover how this game is basically played. The first thing you're going to do is you're gonna draw up to your hand size maximum. So in this case, it would be six cards. Once I've gathered six cards, then I'll move to the next step, which is I can discard and draw a card. Now, depending on the expansion that you are playing, you'll be able to draw from different types of decks here, whether it be the wizard card deck or the resource deck. For the, for the base game, simply choose a card you don't want or can't use, discard that card into the appropriate discard pile, and draw a new card from that pile. Then you can trade cards depending on the number of expansions you are playing with and depending on how many players you are playing with, you'll be able to trade one or maybe two uh, cards from your hand to other players. I could give one to Josh over here and he'll give one back to me. And then I could give one to Callie over here and she'll give one back to me so that I can create my best, most perfect hand I can use for the game. After trading cards, then I can play cards. Now, there's no use in playing cards without having monsters on the field, so I'll go ahead and include a few monsters just so you get an idea of how the turns work, obviously. Um, so I'll just put some random ones out here that are not actually going to be, it's not actually what it's going to look like when you're playing the game, but why not? I'll just put these guys out so you have an idea. So, you are able to play cards. Now, there's a certain there's certain rules um, as well with each of the different monsters, but we'll just assume that they all have just the basic standard HP. So, how it works is each of the areas in your castle is going to be represented by a color or a name um, or a number, okay? So you're going to have this little, uh, this little portion here, which is the six, which is like the arc, and then you're going to have this full area here, which covers two arcs, which is the color, and then you're also going to have the rings or circles, which is the forest, archer, knight, and swordsman area. When you want to do damage, you'll be playing cards from your hand and the cards have restrictions. If I wanted to play something like, I don't know, a red swordsman, I would need to have a monster in the red swordsman area in order to hit it. These monsters have an HP based on the bottom of their chart. Usually it's the, the highest on their little marker here. And when they're damaged, you'll be rotating them on the board. So you're basically trying to play cards to do damage to monsters. So uh, for instance, if I had a bunch of monsters in like different areas around the game board here, and I wanted to do something, I could say, okay, I'll play this card here. Let's me draw two cards. I will now play a red knight. Oh look. There's a red knight here in this red ring. I can do one damage to the monster, reducing its HP by one. Then I could do something like, oh, I can add a flaming effect to my any color hero. I can hit one monster in any color, archer, knight, or swordsman ring. So I can choose to hit this boom troll and I would have it reduce its health by one um, and add a flaming token to it, putting that on there. Uh, and you're just going to follow the cards, and you're just going to keep playing these cards. If a monster's HP ever reaches zero, the monster is going to die. And depending on the way you're playing the game, you'll either gain it as a trophy, or you will be putting it into the discard pile. And your objective is to just destroy as many of these monsters as humanly possible. If you can no longer play any more cards, or choose to no longer want to play any more cards, you'll just set your cards aside, um, and you will pass. And that will lead to the moving monsters. Now, obviously monsters will move in specific ways, depending on what you are playing, but for the base game, mainly, monsters will just move one space closer to the towers. Additionally, if a monster gets in line with one of your walls and wants to move, it'll actually bust that wall. And for the most part, they will take one damage for busting a wall, and the monster is going to say, stay in that position. If the monster has already defeated a wall and wants to move in to defeat your tower, the monster will also take a damage and then destroy your tower. When monsters are in the middle and they want to move around, they are going to be moving in a clockwise position and destroying towers around the board. And that is going to allow them to basically defeat you throughout the game. And so that's how the movement for the monsters will work. They'll start from one side of the game board, moving forward for the most part, towards the, one of the walls, hitting the wall, 
then hitting the tower and moving clockwise to defeat all of your towers. And that is how they win. After you've moved all your monsters based on their movement, you'll then go ahead and draw two new monsters. And how you do that is you'll go into this bag here, you'll pull out monsters from this bag, and you'll go to place them on the board. Some monsters have specific rulings, but for the most part, how it works is you will take this die here, and for each monster, individually, one at a time, you will roll the die, and then, based on the monster that you uh, pulled out of the bag, I pulled out a goblin. <clears throat> uh, I will go ahead and set this guy on the space. I rolled a six. Okay, and then I have another monster. Oh, another goblin. I rolled a three, and I placed them down. And you'll want to enact the effects of each monster as they come out. Sometimes you won't roll a die because sometimes it's not going to be a monster. Perhaps it's going to be something like Wither, where you banish the top card of your castle deck. Or maybe all monsters rotate clockwise around the board, moving them from one side to another, and thusly changing the position of the monsters and which way they're going to be moving. There might be giant boulders that will hit and go through the entire portion of one side of the board until they hit a castle, a wall, or a castle tower, and defeat monsters along their path. Some monsters may or may not be defeated by this, and like I said, it just really depends. But there are a ton of different assortment of things you can draw from the bag. For the base game, though, it's pretty much the simplistic rules of putting out monsters, some are bigger than others, a few of them have effects, and then you have the effects to move the monsters, and you have the effects of giant boulders that will just hit all the monsters in its path until it hits a wall. Finally, they're going to end your turn, and the next player will get a chance to go by, once again, drawing back up to their maximum hand size, and discarding a card, and drawing a new one, trade cards, play cards, move the monsters, and then once again, draw two new monsters from the bag. And that's basically how the game will go, and the game will continue up until the point in which one of two things has occurred. Either all your towers have been defeated, and you will thusly be defeated collectively, or if you defeat all the monsters in the bag, and there are none left remaining to come out and enter the forest field. And that's pretty much how the game is going to go. Uh, as far as the different stuff in the game and all the different options you can play, we'll go into a little bit of detail as far as all of this stuff goes. I'll mainly be covering the first two pieces of the puzzle here. That way you'll have the opportunity to see some more of our content and it's not too crazy for you. Okay, so for the first base game, mainly you're going to be taking care of dealing with main typical original style monsters. They have health, they could be three, could be four, one or two. Some of them might uh, move a little faster. You have a few of them that will heal, summon a few other things and uh, allow you to pull more monsters from the bag. And that's a thing that's going to occur, occur, occur quite often in this game. You're also going to be getting these cool little fortify tokens that you, when you build them with cards from the main castle deck, you'll be able to put them on to your castle walls to help defend. And just to save nuance, the idea is when a monster hits a fortify token, it's basically like another wall, and you'll remove these as opposed to the wall, which are usually built just like a normal wall would be built uh, with some different rules. You can find it in the deck, though, as to how they function. Uh, you also have a tar token. This will allow you to place on a monster and thusly not allow it to move when all monsters move, and then you'll remove this token. There are 49 different monster tokens in the base game, and they mainly are original monsters, like I said, and you have 49 castle cards as well. And that's pretty much it for all the uniqueness to the base game, but let's go ahead and get into the wizard one as well. The wizard one is going to include what the main thing about this game is the wizard deck and the wizard tower. So you can swap out one of your towers for the wizard tower and you can use this wizard deck. And the main change of gameplay is uh, when you go to discard a card and draw a card, instead of drawing from the main castle deck, you could choose to draw from the wizard deck. These are mainly gonna be spells. Most of them are gonna be a little bit more powerful than the basic castle deck. However, if at any point in time you lose this tower, you will also lose your wizard deck. And any cards that are in your hand that are wizard cards, as soon as you play them, they'll get removed from the game. Additionally, there are new monsters. Um, there are some unique co common monsters that will allow you to, that will like fly. You'll have a set of imps that you'll set aside that will mainly be summoned. And you're gonna be getting a certain number of these boss monsters here. Uh, these guys have their own unique rulings. And if you want, you can go ahead and pull out an extra reference card when using this expansion. And it will give you an idea of what the centaur, the conjurer, the cyclops, the doppelganger, the goblin cavalry, and the golem will do. It'll give you an idea of what the Warlock and the Necromancer and the Hydra and the Basilisk and the Chimera and the Dragon will do. 
The difference between these two is some are elite monsters. They just go into the bag based on the back of the side of the uh, of, of the rulebook here. And the others are mega monsters, mega bosses. These guys here are actually not going to be put in the, in the bag because they're extra large pieces and they're obviously different than those. So you'll actually be taking a piece that represents them and puts it, put it in the bag. When you draw this, you'll put out this instead. And these guys all have their own unique abilities. I won't get into too many of them, but I'll give you an example. The Hydra says that for each point of damage that's dealt to it, two imps will appear in the same arc in the forest. So if it's damaged in the Night Ring and it has two health left and you hit it for two health, two health, then it's going to take two damage and give you four imps in the forest area of whatever arc it's in. And those are pretty much the main aspects of this, other than the fact that there's also a thing that's implemented called fire. This is fire here. I kind of give a little display of it, of how, how, how it works. But fire will do damage to monsters after they move, and it'll do damage equal to the number of fires on them. If fire is on a wall or a tower, once there are three, that wall or tower is destroyed. There are some additional new cards that will involve fire in some way, whether it be the flaming sword or whether it be a flaming boulder that will not only destroy destroy something but could set something else on fire as well. So they implemented this really cool unique aspect to it. All right, next expansion. The next expansion is the Dark Titan. It's going to give you this little cheat sheet here that'll give you an idea of the new monsters in this ex expansion as well as um, some of the things that will help you like the Reserve Squad, Stonemason's Cart, and Supply Wagon. These are things that will be put into the bag that will generate you some, some bonuses when they hit the field like building walls or being able to draw additional cards. A distributing points of damage equal to the health of the current reserve squad to any monster anywhere on the board. And of course, my favorite aspect of this expansion, which is this guy here, the Cavalier, who's going to be able to move around the board and damage monsters. And he'll actually have kind of a little bit of an armor system too. So he'll be going and moving and, and doing damage and he, he's trying to kill all the monsters he possibly can. And if he dies, he can actually come back into play. Now, of course, what is the Dark Titan expansion without the Dark Titan himself? Uh, that is this guy here. This is called Agnarok, and it's going to come with five cards, plus one when you buy the big box because there is a bonus card. For, it's called a, it's considered a promo card, but it's in the box here. Each of these guys are different, and they're going to be based. Uh, difficulty is going to be based on the little pips on top of the card. It will tell you what the guy does, and on the opposite side, it will show you how to summon him. There are heralds in the game. They're basically just two health monsters that you'll put in the bag. And when you draw them, you'll place them on these different locations of this card, enact the ability, and once they've all been placed, you'll flip the card over, Agnarok has been summoned, you'll roll the die and place Agnarok on the board somewhere. This guy has a lot of HP and is extremely powerful. So depending on, you could choose to do this randomly, or maybe if you want to kind of control the difficulty, you can select one that's a little bit easier. But this main expansion is going to involve the Heralds and attempting to summon Agnarok and having to deal with him. And he's very powerful. He only ha he has he has like an eight health, but he only goes down to two. So in order to defeat him fully, you have to do two points of damage to him in a single turn. He can be set on fire. There's a bunch of little cool things that can happen and he has spe special abilities as he goes around the board here. Uh, and that's pretty much the main aspects of the Dark Titan expansion. All of these guys will include like sometimes extra cards, they'll include extra monsters and abilities and effects, and you can always go ahead and look at each of these little cards here to tell you, oh, okay, this guy actually, there's also um, Dark Sorceress in here, and a Boom Troll that causes one point of damage to all monsters when it's destroyed in the same space, but it also self-destructs whenever it hits a castle structure. So there's a lot of additional little monsters that comes in each of these little expansions. Next one. All right, Engines of War. 13 new monster tokens. You're going to be getting a, this guy here, a Ballista token. You're also going to be getting a Catapult token. These are going to be used on top of this, which is your keep. Um, it's also going to come with an Engineer, and it's going to come with a new deck of cards. The new deck of cards is called the Resource Deck. You'll be taking out certain resources that normally you have in this deck here, the Castle Deck. And they're mainly like Mortar mortar, mortar and Pestle or whatever it's called, the ones that create walls for you. You'll be able to build walls in the base game back up, and sometimes your keeps too. When you implement this one here though, 
you are actually going to be using just resources from this deck here. And you also have this engineer that you'll be able to rotate and change what you'd like to have the engineer build. Maybe it's a catapult, keeper, ballista, or perhaps it's a pit, a barricade, a spring trap, or a wall. So this expansion involves actually starting to create things on the board that kind of benefit you throughout the game. And there's a wide variety of different characters and different things you can utilize with the resources that you get. And you'll actually be able to draw from this deck as opposed to the other decks. And there's a rules as to how you would do that. And when the deck runs out, you'll actually be losing cards. This also implements a unique aspect to the game which is basically banishing cards when you banish a card it just re is removed from the game and it goes away forever but it's just another additional unique aspect to where you can add more unique effects that will actually function on the board here um, as well as of course additional new monsters in the game as well and i think actually there's another card here that explains it and the different monsters the breath taker the shaman the goblin saboteur and then you have encampments like a barracks or a forward camp and siege engines a war wagon a battering ram a siege tower and so on and so forth so if you really want to have an extra little castle siege slash castle defense aspect of building then you're going to want to add this expansion okay this is my last one and this is the crowns and quests expansion this is going to come with end game quests and standard quests and in the game you'll be selecting one of each and you'll be going through them and each of them is going to be different in fact, each of these is kind of its own little module that kind of changes the game up. So maybe I'm going to play uh, with the Wrath of the Stone Thrower. And then the final is going to be, the finale is going to be the Caves, or maybe the Ambassador's Troll, or Outposts in the Borderlands. And it's going to have unique twists and turns to it. There's going to be goals, setup, which could change the game, uh, playing the quest, you're going to be using different characters to complete the quest. There are certain little characters, like this little guy here, who runs around the game board and completes quests for you. And other ways in which you're going to be using things to complete quests. It opens up a bunch of extra tokens, too. You're going to include barricades. There's a bunch of scrolls. You're going to deal with this obelisk, perhaps. Um, and I believe it also introduces these guys here, these characters here that you can play as. And they give you unique special character benefits. Like for instance, let's just look at one of them, I suppose. Zhang Wei, the architect. This is you may build walls with either one blip brick or one mortar card. So now you're gonna make it easier for you with this guy here because now the quests have given you more challenge. And maybe one of the quests is, uh, on the play cards, so playing the quest, attacking the caves, on the play cards phase of their turn, a player may commit as many color cards in their hand as they wish onto the quest board at any of the designated cave spaces. Collapse a cave requires committing three cards of one color, two cards of a select color, and a card of the remaining color. Uh, so basically this one here is going to have a certain number of caves that are going to pop up on the field. You'll have to use certain cards from your hand, and you're going to be using those cards to remove those caves, and that's going to be what you're trying to do. On the third cave, when it is collapsed, no new monsters are drawn. Players may clear the remaining monsters on the board, and still have to have at least one tower left to, remain, to win, and that's at the end game of this guy here. Um, and there's going to be quests, a quest before that as well. So if you want to add a little quest line that can kind of change and the modules will function differently and you'll be using different portions of extra tokens in the game, you can do that as well. Finally, and I didn't even go over the half of it with this game, uh, you're also going to get a bunch of extra bonus promo stuff. Uh, you'll get these little towers here that you can exchange a tower uh, from the base game and include one of these. And when one of these blows up or falls, it'll have a unique ability. Sometimes good, sometimes not so good. Um, you're going to have additional cards in the game that will be mainly helping you. And everything, I think, is detailed somewhere on the back of the rule book. I think it's over here. So I don't, I don't look, I didn't look at every single one of them. Okay, you get an extra Agnarok card, which I talked about. You get one, two, three, four, five different promo cards, all the promo towers, um, oh, and two other wizard cards. So yeah, there's, there's quite a few little things in this game. This has a ton of expansive content, a ton of different scenarios. You can mix and match all of them, like I said, and make sure the best thing I would suggest you do before going through too much of the rules, just look at the base game rules, and then go ahead and see on the back here what the monster setup chart is going to look like for what you're going to play. Because you can literally include pretty much everything in the game that you would like to include. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to review it now, is that okay? <laughs> Alright, so I, I know I didn't like cover the exact how to play of this game, uh, because there's so much and I feel like, I, 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 I don't know, I just feel like if I covered one thing I'd want to cover the next thing and it would draw on too long. I figured just give you the idea of how the game works, where you're drawing cards, you're then going to discard, you're, you're going to exchange cards up to the point where you can get the best hand you possibly can. You'll try and kill all the monsters you can based on what the cards say. You'll move those monsters, they're going to try and destroy your stuff, 
and then you'll draw two new monsters out. They'll hit the board, and they'll go running once again on the next turn. And there's just going to be an onslaught of stuff happening in the game. I, I, most of you probably gathered that. There's a different order of play when you're adding new expansions. There's a different setup for new expansions. So hopefully I gave you enough information to determine if you like the idea of having all the different Castle Panic uh, stuff all in one box. Maybe if you just own the base game, it's worth picking this one up, that kind of thing, we'll, which we'll discuss now. First things first, though. Quality of the game. Is the game quality at the same level or higher of the previous game? And I would say this game is of high quality. This reminds me of the base game as far as the base game components go. It's actually slightly better in my opinion. Um, and it also includes all the different expansions, which are also very nice. I have only had the original base game in the Wizard's Tower, so that was what I'm very accustomed to. I've played quite a few of those games here, and I played a live version of just that one. And once again, I got this box to see how it felt, if it remained the same, and uh, yeah, it felt, it felt good. Now, that being said, uh, the quality of everything here is wonderful. The pieces of cardboard are long-lasting, nice and thick. All the cards are easy to read. All the graphic design is simple. The fact that they included all the different types of player aids is nice. Uh, it, it all works for me very well. It looks like a whole lot of stuff when you're sitting here and looking at it on a table, but when you separate it all out, not a big deal. Okay, uh, now, the, the artwork is also just like I remembered it, and uh, I'm sure that this is literally just the uh, a reprint of all of the stuff all put together, kind of, and so uh, if you liked any of the original stuff and you didn't have a couple of expansions and whatnot, this might be the one to pick up, uh, because, yeah, it's not going to do it any injustice from the previous games. Uh, I'm a big fan of the game board and all the different monsters and whatnot. While it's cartoony, it is fun, and uh, it's an enjoyable experience. I feel like I'm put in the mood with all this artwork, and it doesn't, like, take up too much uh, like, of my senses to where I don't know where everything is. I, I can see everything quite fine, even though it's very colorful and vibrant. Castle Panic is hard. Castle Panic is really hard. Uh, I don't know if it's just that I'm terrible at the game, um, but I lose more than I win. Quite, quite a lot more than I win. You need to be really, really selective when trading cards, with cards to discard and draw, uh, when you want to play cards and how, whether it's worth saving a card later or just trying to empty your hand to draw even more cards. Is it better to be greedy in this game and dump as much as you can, even if it might not be as beneficial to draw additional cards from the deck? It's really, really hard to say for me, and especially when you start adding in all the extra expansions. That being said, you should play the base game first if you've never played this game. Take this out. Just bring out the base game and just play it so you understand the basic concepts. The basic concepts of the, of the base game are very, very basic. It's very easy to grasp. There's only a few monsters that are kind of bosses that are crazy, and you'll know the order of play. It's just six things you do on your turn, and they're all really, really simple. So, uh, yes, I strongly recommend you do that before you add any, any of this other stuff, because it starts just to get a little heavier and a little heavier and to the point where once you put everything together, if you don't have a full grasp on each of the expansions, you're going to go back to the rulebook quite a bit. Does this monster die from a flaming boulder? Does this monster allow me to hit it with this specific type of spell? How many of these monsters take this much damage when I do this? And you'll be like, I don't, I don't really remember because you didn't look into the rules on a specific expansion when you went through and played it. And you didn't, you just put it all together. Uh, it, it, it might be a, a little bit more challenging. And if you're okay with that, that's fine. Or maybe you're a mega gamer and you can go through a rule book and, and you're like, you just got it. But for me, I highly suggest for anybody who's a standard just board game player, go through each of them, play them individually with the base game, maybe add one or two when you're comfortable with it, and then eventually, if you want, add the full experience. All these expansions are wonderful. My favorite will always be the Wizard Tower, probably because of my nostalgia for it. I like the additional, uh, the addition of the extra deck, the tower that you now have to protect, and the new monsters. It provides a whole bunch of new bon moss, boss monsters and mega monsters. It's just really, really cool. Um, and it doesn't take away from the base game. It's very easy to grasp. I don't even feel the need to play the base game with people anymore because I feel like I have a good grasp on explaining the Wizard one because the base game is so straightforward. If they're a modern gamer and they've used to play other games, I can just simply add the Wizard tower and be like, all right, now we got a bunch of goodies we can play with. 
Uh, that being said, there are other expansions that are worth taking a look at as well, of course. Um, one of my other favorites is, oddly enough, the story mode. I love the idea of having the quests and being able to choose them. It kind of makes unique new modules with the game. And there's things that you're going to be doing, characters you'll be using to move around the board to accomplish certain missions. Being able to destroy certain things at a certain period of time, it stops being name namely about how the main ba base game is played and just changes it up. So I feel like I'm playing kind of a unique different type of castle defense game with this side objective that usually must be completed. And it's, it's it's just a nice extra bonus. And it comes with a bunch of extra things where I start feeling like more personalized with who I am as a player. Adding in the extra playable characters is really great. Uh, the different types of quest objectives and tokens you'll be going around and dealing with. And yes, yeah, so that one is, is really fun. Uh, this one here is the bad guy, the big baddie, Agnarok. Uh, he's not a really difficult expansion to add either. Um, yes, there are going to be new, unique little additions to the game mode, and of course dealing with the heralds as they come out, and you're going to be suffering some negative effects like all players discard a hit card, then all players discard a special card, and then on the third herald, you'll roll for a giant boulder. And then he pops out, and then he's a beast and you have to deal with whatever it is. After he moves, roll a die, and then he can regain a health, move all monsters of space, throw a giant boulder, etc, etc. He becomes very difficult, uh, but I like the idea of a super ultra mega mega boss and it just kind of adds that extra feel to it an extra uh, doom looming to the game uh the siege tower one is kind of nice it's kind of just like throwing a bunch of stuff on the field and now you're playing kind of an rts in some ways an rts reminds me of like the starcraft version of a castle t tower defense game so that one was a lot of fun uh and, and, and putting it all together was probably like a lot for me, especially with uh, when adding in an extra player that wasn't too familiar with everything. I mean, I love the idea of adding the engineer and how the engineer can, can build things for you. It's even just double-sided too with the extra artwork that went into some time, that's cool. Um, and moving this guy around and changing what you can build based on what you have as far as the different resources, based on what cards you draw from the resource card deck, which removes resources from the main deck. So you're not just drawing into them if you do not want to. Now you can just guarantee yourself some damage effects. Yeah, this is, is good. Um, it's good. If, if you don't mind a game that's very challenging, um, then you're going to enjoy this as it stands. But I would also suggest, too, if it becomes too challenging for you and before just putting it away, consider making some adjustments. Maybe you just want to add, this is my personal opinion, maybe you can go ahead and just add these character cards to the game. And that's it, just the base game or the game with the wizards. And that way you can have a little advantage in the game. Or is that not enough? Maybe you can just go ahead and add the character that has the cavalry. You can mix and match all this stuff. I know that there are specific expansions and they each have little modules that kind of attach them in a whole, but you don't necessarily have to do that. You can kind of make your own difficulty up. Nothing that you take out or add in for the most part, will affect the play style of the game. It'll just change the difficulty. And these are all set up to be a challenging experience that you're going to enjoy. And if that's what you're looking for, that's what you can get. But you don't have to do that. Or maybe you just want some extra little difficulty. And you just you just want to add Agnarok and you just want to add the Heralds. And, and that's it. And you can do that with the game as well. It all works in that interchangeable way, which is so, so cool. Do you just want to play with an extra quest? You can do that as well. It has a lot of options. It's a beautiful game. It's a classic game. It's one I'm going to keep forever. Um, I originally kept my original forever up until the point where this one came in and now this is the one I'm keeping forever. But if you love Castle Panic and you don't have all the expansions, this is the one to pick up. It fits everything wonderfully inside the box and while it is a lot of stuff and it has a lot of places to go, right on the back of the box here you will see all the different spaces that you can add your stuff into it, where it's going to all go. They just thought of everything. They did a good job. This is a game that I give my highest seal of approval to. And I mean, I think I saw in the box here. I mean, see, my, my seal isn't even worth all that much. Look at all the other seals on here. You got casual game recommended, seal of approval from the Dice Tower, tabletop recommends it. It, it goes on. A lot of awards because this is a wonderful game obviously. But it's really, really, really hard, okay? Really hard. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Castle Panic, the big box with all four of the expansions in the base game. If you're interested in picking this up, there's a link down below in the description where you can pick it up at Fireside Games. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video and you've watched more than one of our videos, consider hitting that subscribe button. If we've earned your subscription, if you feel like we've earned it, it would matter. It means a lot to us. 
All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to defending the castle with you next time.